Hello and welcome to Frontrunner Motorsport. Everyone talks about the Super Touring era as the best era of touring car racing, but for me there is a car that stands tall as the greatest touring car ever, and it comes before the 2 litre Super Touring era, the Ford Sierra RS500 Cosworth. It is one of my favourites and it had a huge amount of success in just a few years of competitive racing, so remember to subscribe if you like the video and let's begin. The British Touring Car Championship has been my favourite series ever since I was a young lad, which was actually quite a long time ago. I had the videotapes, and I watched them to death, and so many great touring cars came and went in that time, from the Ford Mondeo to the Alfa Romeo, with loads in between, but there was one car I always associated with touring cars and a car that was very successful. That car is the Ford Sierra RS500 Cosworth, specifically the one driven by Andy Rouse in the British Touring Car Championship. That was the car I watched dominate in the BTCC from 1988 to 1990. Those were the VHS tapes I had, and the memories of those years are still strong. Andy Rouse in his Ford is just a racing icon for me, probably even more so than Ayrton Senna ever was. But that success goes a lot further than just the British Touring Car Championship. The Sierra Cosworth was successful all over the globe. From Dick Johnson Racing taking the car to success over in Australia, to the DTM, to the World Touring Car Championship, including races like the Bathurst 1000 and the Spa 24 Hour Race, even in places like Japan, New Zealand and Macau, the Sierra was a wildly successful car in just three years where it was allowed to be a complete beast of a racing machine. It even won a round of the World Rally Championship in the hands of Didier Oriol, at Corsica in 1988, made even more amazing considering it was a rear-wheel drive car and beat a couple of four-wheel drive Lancia Delta Integrales. It should have won the 1987 World Touring Car Championship, The Eggenberger Motorsport team sponsored by Texaco took pole at the last six races of the year with the new RS500 and Klaus Ludwig and Klaus Niedwitz only lost the championship by a point to the BMW M3 of Roberto Ravaglia. A point they would have got if they hadn't been disqualified from the Batters 1000, which they won, for a wheel arch irregularity. A pretty big kick in the teeth, but the Ford Sierra RS500 also won the Batters 1000 in 1988 and 1989, with overall success in the Australian Touring Car Championship in those same years, with Dick Johnson dominating both. There was a Spa 24 hour win for Bern Schneider, Gianfranco Brancatelli and Win Percy in 1989, Klaus Ludwig did win the old school DTM in 1988 in a Ford Cosworth run by the Works Ford team, with the Wolf Racing team taking the team's championship also in a Ford Sierra Cosworth. Naoki Nagasaka won the Japanese Touring Car Championship in 1987, followed by Hisashi Yokoshima in 1988. And then of course, there was the British Touring Car Championship. The Ford Sierra Cosworth should have won in 1988-89 as well as the championship it did win in 1990. The car first appeared in 1987 with Andy Rouse and Pete Hall both taking a win towards the end of the year, but it was in 1988 when the car first dominated the old Class A. Now the old class system that the British Touring Cars used up to 1990 was absolutely ridiculous. It meant the overall Class A winner would take overall wins at the front of the field only to lose the championship to a driver in a less competitive class. Andy Rouse dominated Class A in 1988. He took 9 of 12 wins, with Fortiero Cosworths taking the other three. Jerry Marnie took his only British touring car win at the opening round after Andy Rouse got a puncture. Steve Soper made several appearances and was the only driver to really take the fight to Andy Rouse all year in his Eggenberger Ford, including one of the best battles in the series history at Brands Hatch but Sopa did also take a single victory at Fruxton. Gianfranco Brancatelli, also in an Eggenberger Ford, took the final win of the year, again after Rouse got a puncture. But despite the dominance Rouse showed at the front, it was Frank Sittner who won the championship in the far less competitive Class B in a BMW M3, with his only challengers being an incompetent Mike Smith and the part-time Roland Ratzenberger. 
Rouse would win Class A in 1989 as well, but was more closely challenged by Rob Gravitt. The Fortier were also taking all 13 rins that year as well, with Rouse and Gravitt taking the majority, with Tim Harvey and Lawrence Bristow also sharing a couple. Once again, the overall championship went to the Class C winner John Cleland in a Vauxhall Astra, and plans were being drawn up for a more simple 2 litre formula. So in 1990, it was the Ford Sierras in Class A and the rest of the 2 litre cars in Class B, the foundation of the next era in touring car racing. And the 2 litre class was amazing, with the likes of John Cleland and Jeff Allen in Vauxhall Cavaliers fighting Frank Sittner in a BMW M3, costing themselves the 1990 championship, won by the Ford Sierra Cosworth of Rob Gravitt. I'm glad the Sierra got to win the championship. Fords again won all the races that year, meaning between Mike Newman winning in a BMW 635 CSI in 1987 to Will Hoy winning the opening round in a BMW M3 in 1991, all races were won by a Ford Sierra Cosworth. There were a few Sierras on the grid in 1991. Gravit remained loyal in a 2-litre Sapphire Cosworth but had no success. And there were other part-time runners like Sean Walker, Dennis Leach, Dave Brody and Andy Middlehurst. None really achieving anything in the more competitive series. All the wins going to BMW, Vauxhall and Toyota. Dennis Leach would enter a few rounds in 1992. And Jim Wheels and Bob Berridge would enter select rounds in 1993. But that was the end for the Sierra Cosworth in the BTCC. Rouse had moved on to Toyota and later to the Ford Mondeo. Gravit after 1991 would move on to Peugeot's and the last few disappeared from the series after being truly neutered by the 2 litre regulations and the car also ageing in terms of technology. So why were these mighty Cosworths the best racing cars in my opinion? There's something about their poise, the way they squirm around when the power gets pushed to the limit. They were massively exciting to watch and whilst I love the super touring car era they will always be a special place in my heart for the mighty Sierra Cosworth. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you have any good memories of the Cosworth Sierra? Do you have another race car from history you love no matter what? Remember to subscribe, like and share the video. Check back for more content soon. Thank you for watching and have a good one.